Hey everyone, I'm Melissa New and welcome to What's in Your Bag. I'm here with co-host Chase Reynolds with Lens Rentals. Chase, Hi. how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Fabulous. Happy uh -huh. to have you here. And to my stage left is <laughs> Glenn Dewis. Glenn, what's happening? Well, here at Photoshop World, so yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm in the USA. I'm always happy to be here. Anyways. Happy to be in the <laughs> USA. God bless America. So we're going to talk about... Um, you know, obviously at LensRentals.com, they've got a whole lot of gear. That's why we brought Chase on here to talk about just kind of some hot gear, but more importantly, what what's in your bag right now and different things that you just can't live without, which is a very touchy yeah. subject for you right now. This, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. In the air? Yeah, I just, do you know what? I wish I could just say, I have this, I love it, and I also like this, but yeah. do you know what? I really am up in the air at the moment, and it's only been since... I don't know, maybe the last six to 12 months that I've really kind of felt unsettled with my gear. The only thing I'm Look, you can see him with you. He's, I, he's you just struggling. Pain. You can feel it's my pain. pain. We're here to help. It's okay. <laughs> let it out. Let it out. We're here for you. The, the only th I've never been one for, as strange as it may sound, I've never been one for collecting lots and lots of gear. Mm. Um, and I think that's probably because I was, when I first started, I was given really good advice from Zach Harris saying, I only use what you've got until you know the limitations and then get what you think you can oh, find out what you need. So, advice, and I've been pretty good with that and that's been good obviously financially. Mm -hmm. um, but I've only, the, the two lenses I've got at the moment, I've just changed over, well, fairly recent changed over to Canon and uh, my favorite lens. In fact, I, I, I words came out of my mouth that I didn't even know I knew. The first time I shot with this 70 to 200, uh, the 2.8 IS2, the new lens then, mm. my God, was that sharp and that was a real, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my favorite, favorite piece mm -hmm. of kit. But with the cameras, I really am up in the air at the moment. And it's kind of, it's getting a little bit annoying now. Do you know what I mean? It really is. <laughs> well, because, because I, before this new Canon thing, you were Nikon. Oh, yeah. I've, I was Nikon since I started. I had a, a D200 when I started. Then I moved to the D3, which I loved. Uh, then I went to the D800. Um, and I kind of explained on my blog why it wasn't suitable for me. Oh, you know, I, I never said it wasn't a good camera because because it is. It just wasn't fit for purpose. And, and I think we spoke about this earlier on that my, my feeling with equipment is I couldn't care less what label's on it. As long as it's fit for purpose and it does yeah. what I need to do, it could be anything. I, don't, I really don't care. But the D800 wasn't right for me. So then I changed over to Canon and the 5D, the 5D Mark III, it kind of felt like it was made for me. Everything, the way it, the way it felt, getting around the menus, it just felt great. Um, but my work's changed over the last few months and I'm pushing the pictures a little bit more, so I needed more dynamic range. So then I kind of ventured into the Fuji and I loved the Fuji. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a the X-T1, it was a great camera. I loved the size of it, the portability, the little tilt screen. It was just Do you, do you feel the butt coming on? Yeah. Do you feel yeah, it? Yeah, well, I'm you up. Okay, okay. So I know, down. I know, <laughs> I think it's right back here. Because Fuji is dear to my heart, so is Nikon. So you're like, I've got an yeah, emotional yeah, yeah. roller coaster happening so, right now. So where's the butt? Yeah. Okay, the well, listen, the, the Fuji was, as you know, a, a fantastic camera. Um, but I guess I wasn't expecting too much. I was expecting a camera that was everything to everyone. It could do, you know, whatever job and assignment you had, it was just perfect. Right. Um, and for portraits, fabulous. In the studio, oh, fabulous. Yeah. But because I was doing this, this new animals project that I'm working on, I was photographing a lot of kind of um, outdoor scenes with uh, foliage. I, and I mean, it's only me, I personally found that the, when it came to the foliage, the picture just didn't seem right. It just didn't, it seemed to lose something. Um, it was and a almost, little bit painterly rather than... Yeah, it almost, it almost had before. like an, an oil painting kind of look to it. Now, you know, I wrote about this on my blog as well, and I wasn't slating it in the slightest. I was saying, look, this is what I found, that's all. Sure. I've tried various um, raw converters to see if that was the issue, mm -hmm. and I was still getting the same result. Mm -hmm. So clearly that camera, although it was fantastic for travel, for portraits and all that kind of stuff, it wasn't good for the landscape, for me anyway. Right. So now I'm back with the Canon. Because I've been doing more. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm back go. with the Canon. No tears. By the end of the week, we'll be back in Nikon. So oh, right. Do you know what? You say that, but oh, it's a real, really pain with my Keeps head. Keeps you up at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm now back with the Canon. I'm doing the same processing that I was doing with the X-T1. And the Canon files can't cope with it. I don't feel they can cope with it. It's not the dynamic range mm -hmm. there. So now I'm, 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 it's really annoying. I'm really unsettled with the cameras. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking, do I have a look at the Sony A7R? So I'm gonna have a chat with Brian Hughes oh, today. Um, yeah. But then I'll see Frank Dorhoff. You know, that he's posting 
Oh, yeah, I cheers. Just while I'm cheers here, I'd love guy. that while I'm here. Yeah. Uh, then I see Frank Dorkoff saying he's just checking out the D810 and he's loving it. I'm like, oh, Frank, don't do this to me. <laughs> right. I can't go full circle. Okay, you know what? Obviously, you and Chase need to be good friends because <laughs> stop buying this and just keep renting it so you yeah. your, your pocketbook of it. But I, I love that. I, I think that there's a lot of people out there that are struggling with what gear to get and what's best for them, what's best for different jobs. So I think this is normal. I think yeah. a lot of people can relate to this. But you see, this. you hit the nail on the head there. What's best for them? Yeah. I'm not I'm not chasing technology. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not yeah. going, oh, that's great. Oh, there's that. Oh, I'll have that. Oh, there's another one. I'll have the that. I'm not doing gear. that. I'm not stepping yeah. stones from one piece of kit. Because you can never keep up with technology. All I'm doing is I am, my post-processing, which is what I'm mainly known for, mm -hmm is kind of changing over the last six to 12 months. And I, and I need a camera that can allow me to do what I do with that. That's right. And if it means me jumping from one brand or one kind of particular you know, model to another, then I've got to do that until I'm happy. So, you know, I'm sure, well, I hope next time we speak <laughs> and we ask the same question, this is what I like. <laughs> He's like, this, right this, here. done, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> no tears. Exactly. No emotional roller coaster. Awesome. Well, Glenn, where can people find your work? Um, main hub is my website, which is glynjewis.com, which is G-L-Y-N-D-E-W-I-S.com. Uh, and on there, there's links to my YouTube channel, which gets uh, a video every single week, every Wednesday, a new video goes you out. You still do one every week? Every single week. Yeah. Um, so it's 62, I think we're up to wow. now. So, and yeah. it's a lot of it, it, behind the scenes or mostly editing? It's, it's mainly, it's a photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop um, uh, weekly show podcast. It's on iTunes as well. Um, but the majority of it is the retouching, yeah. Okay. yeah definitely. okay. And definitely, Chase, where can people find, you know, we talked a lot of gear, a lot of ups and downs yeah. with Portland. <laughs> exactly. Where can people, if they don't have the budget, where can people find where to rent? Well, we'd love for you guys to come check out lensrentals.com. Um, for instance, like if you want to try a camera, like the A7S or the A7R, um, you know, that's, I'd say about 43% of our clientele is literally people just want to try something before they buy it. Cool. You know, because it's, this is not a cheap hobby. You know, a lot of us think yeah, yeah. we're going to start small, but then they have the Zach Arias uh, gear acquisition syndrome, gas yeah. as he calls it. You know, <laughs> next thing you know, you're like, I have six camera bodies, no lenses work with any of them, you know, anywhere, yeah. everywhere. Um, so yeah, try them before you buy it. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Well, Glenn, thank you so much for your oh, thank time. Thank you. Thank you so much.